The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Pontini, says Nigeria's information and communication technology industry has been witnessing phenomenal growth and enabling social economic development in Nigeria and across the continent. Pantani made this session in June on the sideline of the 2022 International Telecoms Union's World Telecoms Development Conference, ITU WTDC. Now, providing statistics for the Nigerian ICT industry, the minister said in the last 20 years, the country has achieved robust growth in her telecoms industry, going from less than half a million connected telephone lines to over 200 million active mobile lines as of April. We will focus on the growth of the ICT sector on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadoni. First off, the Lagos State Government is set to formally launch its 30-year development plan at this year's Economic Summit Tag Ehibeti 2022. Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget Samuel Igube, who dropped this hint at a pre-summit stakeholders' engagement, says Ehibeti 2022 will focus on detailed discussions and aspects of the development plan. Uh, let's take details of that report now and we'll be right back. Stay with us. The Lagos Economic Summit Plan, tagged Aigbeti, birthed over two decades ago, is a creation that brings private and public sector players together to deliberate on the development of the state. As the stakeholders converge on this hall, it is time to reflect on the state's development strides in the last 22 years. Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Egobe, reveals that 210 resolutions have been made out of the 222 reached in the past 22 years. And it is not just a talk shop because Egbeti presents for Lagos State a platform for accountability and transparency as we will always come back at the next Egbeti to account for what we did with the past resolution. So, for example, the interest is expressed in the last Ehigbeti, we had about 11,100 people register for the conference. And out of that, over 10,500 people attended. The Lagos State Development Plan 2022 to 2052 is set to chart the path to sustainable socio-economic growth. The government and its consultants explain that part of the phases of the plan includes developing strategic milestones, support implementation, and align stakeholders among others. With regards to creating a human-centric city, there are four focus areas. It's education, healthcare, housing, safety, and security. And the idea really is that Lagos is able to attract talent and retain talent because it's believed that the biggest enabler to get into where we want to be is that Lagos continues to be the hub for top, top class talent in the world. Between now and October when we hold the summit, we ask for your support as we always do. Your support in considering this, um, this agenda and sending your comments through the channels that have already been established. Captains of industries, the organized private sector, as well as the diplomatic community promise support to see to the achievement of the plan. The Lagos State has a great vision to make things better for Lagosians. We are uh, a good traditional partner of, of, of Lagos and Nigeria, but our economic position was, uh, uh, let's say a few years ago, dominated by revenues in the, in the fossil fuel. Lagos, due to the great works of those that came after us, have turned Lagos into a masterpiece. In Africa. Over the years, the Anigbeti Summit has served as a beacon of change and helped the future of Lagos through public discourse. Welcome back. That's the Lagos plan for the next 30 years. Now, Dari Medwoye is a tech enthusiast and chief digital officer for Airs Insurance and Airs Life Assurance Limited. He is also director at Milky Express Limited. He joins us now to talk about the ICT sector 
in Nigeria. Thanks for joining us, Dari, on this um, particular discourse. Thank you for having me, Justin. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, the minister's assertion. He said Nigeria has actually recorded phenomenal growth uh, as of June uh, this year. He said that uh, the broadband in, uh, penetration in Nigeria has increased to over 42%. Yeah, absolutely. It's a laudable achievement, and um, uh, we can all attest to that. I think it was about 20 years ago, uh, GSM was introduced in Nigeria, and it formed the fundamental fabric for which we all communicate now. Uh, pretty much everyone has a mobile phone, and um, uh, that formed the basis for uh, the growth we've experienced now. No, fine. It is, it is enough uh, growth uh, from 20, uh, 2001 there about till now since uh, GSM was introduced into the country. But would you really say it is Uhuru yet? 42% is a very good one. But if you look at countries like South um, Africa and some other you know, emerging countries, you'd no notice that uh, they are similarly doing better. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about uh, getting into the 5G space, uh, but how far do you really think we're going? Are we going at a slow rate or are we actually taking it um, the way it should be? Very good um, perspective, and you're right. Um, as a matter of fact, um, one of the things I looked out for in the report was the matrix that formed the, uh, the percentage growth, mm -hmm. and it wasn't indicated in that report. I think there's still a lot to do. Um, the, 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 there are a lot of fundamental factors that are affecting the growth and the penetration of ICT and um, uh, uh, technology or telecommunications in Africa, or in Nigeria specifically. And um, I can mention a few, if it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. So the first I would say is um, we, need, we need the right policies. And mm -hmm. I'm aware that um, government is taking the right steps in that direction. I'm aware of um, a new bill, I think a new startup, uh, tech startup bill that has been passed, that's passed the third reading. And um, we need the right policies that would foster the um, enhancement and the growth of um, the right infrastructure uh, for, for all that kind of growth that we need to have. The growth is um, critical because it has fundamental underneath um, broadband increase and also infrastructure increase. And I'll explain that. Uh, for every form of communication that needs to happen in this space, it relies on two things. One, infrastructure. Two, internet. Uh, we've been trying to get into the 5G space for a while now. Mm. The 5G, and let me clarify, is not just a nice to have is not the antichrist is <laughs> okay. not any of those things it's critical for us to for it to open up a lot of new business opportunities in in nigeria and there's a lot of challenges in the area number one is power yes we may have a lot of people with uh, phones and access to some basic data but there's still a challenge of power because these base stations that uh, propagate these net networks are, are, they need power to run mm. and of course with power comes petrol, with petrol comes diesel, you know, and all those things are affecting how cheap and how available and how widely spread um, uh, these base stations are. Mm. So just to mention a few. Okay, but let's take it one step further now. It's been 20 years or over 20 years since, uh, you know, the GSM, from 2G to 3G to 4G. Right. Now we're talking about um, 5G and all of that. But one would have thought that over time that uh, the price uh, would have been brought considerably right. uh, down as right. it is now. But from what we hear, you know, there is a particular plan, you know, to uh, have Nigerians pay more for data and calls. Exactly. So that, that's why um, I had to mention those um, fundamental things. And those fundamental things are the reason why I can assure you that the price has not gone down and may not likely go down, may likely increase like you've mentioned, because mm -hmm. they form the basis for the availability and the spread. So if you look at the cost of doing business in Nigeria, number one is power. And you would agree with me that in recent time, the cost of power has increased significantly, as a matter of fact, astronomically. So the, the, the providers of this um, internet service need to power the infrastructure for this to happen. Number two is also the ethics um, um, issues we are having recently. Because uh, the, these infrastructures are not made locally. They are brought from abroad and they are maintained even by foreign currency. Because mm. right now we have a lot of resource drain in Nigeria. And so we have to keep relying on um, foreign um, 
experience to come and help us uh, maintain this infrastructure. And number three is policies as well. If we have the right policies that make it convenient and comfortable for these providers to be able to um, grow, regardless of um, this um, uh, challenges we are having economically, it will help to make to regulate the price and make it much more affo affordable. Mm. So, so yes, uh, it, it's a basic challenge that we have, and we need the government to provide the right support to ensure that uh, the ever-changing challenges around uh, infrastructure, around power, around, around FX does not affect uh, the ripple effects of, um, of, of, of the cost of data. Okay, but let's talk about, uh, you know, service, um, you know, um, provision here in the country in terms of uh, the big players. Uh, I don't understand mentioning brands, uh, but over time, that particular space has been deepened and um, new players have come in. But one would have thought that Nigerians would be getting value for money in terms of, uh, you know, what they are paying for. But over time, we still have this issue of, uh, you know, drop calls sometimes and uh, uh, not getting the right speed. What what, are, what have we failed to see, really? Okay, so to to um, to put it in simple terms, if I'm going to make a call right now um, to you, right, sitting just a few meters away from me, um, it's not a it, the signal does not flow from me directly to you. It flows to the nearest uh, base station. station, right? And if for any reason that base station is down, that means that it will go to the next available base station, which is probably a bit further away. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the further away the base station is, the less the quality of the call. So bringing it down to um, you know, your question, it goes back to the challenges of doing business in Nigeria. These base stations have to be powered, from my understanding, with diesel, uh, diesel generators. But some, some, some of them will have backup generators. The cost of diesel generator just this year has increased from, I think, maybe 300 naira per liter to over 700 per sure. naira per liter. Yeah. So it, it's, it's making the cost of doing business very difficult. Number two is that there's a lot of resource drain right now in Nigeria uh, because the world is becoming a global village. And a lot of people, a lot of good resources are beginning to see the usefulness of their skill outside Nigeria. And they are being offered uh, to be paid in foreign currency. You know, who wouldn't jump at that? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of resource drain. And unfortunately, we don't have the right educational system that produces um, the right quality of, uh, of uh, resources that we need to take on from there. So despite the fact that, yes, these guys have been around for a while, yes, they made a lot of money, is not proportional to the, the expectation of our expected outcome in, the in terms of these challenges that I've mentioned. All right. You're still watching Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, and we still have Dari Medroye, a tech enthusiast with us in the house. We'll take a quick break and return with more to join us again. Welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Dari is still with us. Dari, let's talk about the future of um, the ICT sector in Nigeria. Nigerians have, you know, begun to um, appreciate um, the the place of technology in almost all facets of their business: uh, telemedicine, mm -hmm. insurance, in banking, or uh, even in everyday uh, business. You know, but would you really say that um, in the next five to ten years, uh, the average household would be doing everything? Techie, as it were. Well, to be honest, um, it's 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 inevitable. Mm. Uh, it's a disruption. The world has become a global village, and the um, communication protocol of the world or the globe is tech, right? For example, if you're going to have a business meeting with somebody in Asia or America, the likely um, tool you would use is Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet, right? So we have, for us to be able to compete at that global level, uh, for businesses that are coming into Nigeria to invest in Nigeria and to play in Nigeria, we need to mature our level of tech to be able to play. So mm -hmm. I would say it's inevitable. However, uh, will it be easy or will it be um, very functional? Maybe not, given some of these challenges that we have. I would think that uh, the focus for us to be able to play in a mature level at that time 
is for us to drive local advocacy and local, uh, shall I say, investments and manufacturing of tech. Right now, for every business that, if you want to have, if you want to develop an app or you want to develop a service, you would most likely host your service abroad. And by hosting it abroad, you are also more or less like uh, there's forex involved. Mm -hmm. However, if we're able to build our infrastructure locally to ensure that if I'm developing an app or you're engaging someone to develop an app for you, you are playing with the local currency, you are, you are engaging with the local currency. It's a great long way to develop our infrastructure locally because it's now a case of demand and supply. And um, it would ensure that we, we are compelled to um, work towards that maturity. Mm. As we wrap up now, Diary, you know, a whole lot has been said concerning you know, what 5G technology would do to uh, not just Nigeria or Africa, but uh, entirely to the world. If you were to break it down to the lay terms, to the average man on the street, to the average woman who sells tomato, mm. what would 5G do to them or good for question. them? Very good question. Like I said, let's quickly kill the myth of 5G being an antichrist, mm. all right? So I would say, right, um, if you go to a market right now, and most likely you'll probably go without cash because you have your ATM card or you have your phone to do a transfer. Yeah. Right now, in most markets, you would find POS service agents, mm. right? So they are there to meet the gap between you and I that don't have cash mm -hmm. and the market to that needs cash. True. For that POS machine to work, it needs internet or it needs some kind of network service. Yes. Yeah. If we are still in the days of 2G or 1G, I don't think that service would work. Mm. So you see where I'm going to? Yes, so the, 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 the stronger and the more mature our uh, internet service is, the more business opportunities that it brings open to markets, women, and other, every form of life. So it's important to have that so that it opens up new business opportunities that would you know, foster business and economy at the end of the day. Well said, you know, it couldn't have been broken, you know, any lower. Thank you so much, M. Dai, for sharing all of this useful insight with us. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Justin, for having me again. All right. Barry Medonier is a tech um, enthusiast, and he has actually said so much. I'm sure you have taken one or two things from this particular discourse. As we wrap up, the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songolu, has restated his commitment to building affordable and decent housing apartments that meet different strata of the citizenry. Songolu, who stated this during the official commissioning of the Channel Point Apartments in Victoria Island area of the state, said that these remained a key priority in his administration. The venue of the commissioning was filled to capacity with well wishes and government functionaries. All are seated, waiting patiently for the formal cutting of the tape by Governor Babajide Sawonlu. It is a joint venture partnership project between the state government through the Legal State Development and Property Cooperation, LSDPC, and Brooks Assets and Resources Limited. Larry Shola is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Brooks Assets and Resources. She is excited to see the day come true. LSDPC did just sign this project and give us. They were here with us every day. They were here with us through the tea campaign. Governor Sawunlu, while addressing the people, spoke on the overall goal of the Urban Renewal Programme and called for more collaborations with all other private investors in developing the state. Our doors are open to work with other willing private investors, private sector players in all facets of life, be it in road construction, in housing, in urban development, in hospital. We can work together, we can collaborate, because where we cannot reach, the private sector also can reach the place. And I'm also using this opportunity to say that our plan at ensuring that the opportunity in our land spaces is totally unlocked before the end of the year. In fact, we've given commitments that our EGIS project, which unlocks the potential, ensuring that title documents right, can be processed within a couple of days. 
at the comfort of your houses, at the comfort of your offices, will be delivered before the end of this year. He also reassured Lagosians of his commitment to ensuring decent and affordable housing for all. And so I want to urge all our citizens to be rest assured that the provision of affordable and decent housing remain a key priority for your administration. Like I said, construction is going on in several, several other parts of the state. On his part, the Oniru of Iruland, Oba Abdul Wasiu Omogwala Honlawa, commended Governor Sawunlu for thinking outside the box. He said that Lagos State has a very small land mass, hence the reason need for the state to always convert any available space or inactive property to good use. I have always been advocating for a compact, coordinated and connected Lagos. With that, we'll be able to reduce the travel time, we'll be able to increase on our productivity, we'll be able to do a whole lot. This is a good opportunity for all of us. Let us upgrade, let us add value to those projects that are almost abandoned, if not, I don't want to use abandoned. Let us add value to them and make them to look like this. Sitting on a land size of 2,832 square meter, the Channel Point Apartments consist of two blocks of 38 units of two and three bedroom flats. It had just two bungalows on it, housing just two different families, but thus certainly gone with the wind. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedoku, Plus TV News. And that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin at Adonye. See you again next time. Bye for now.